What is happening, everybody? James Hancock here, here to give a little review for the movie Get Out. The good news is the hype is for real. The movie is fantastic. I had totally written it off. I saw a trailer on TV that made it look like a pretty routine, conventional thriller about hypnosis. And I was like, all right, well, that may, may be kind of cool, but maybe I'll catch that later on, whatever. And then I saw on Rotten Tomatoes last night and today that it was at 100%. I was like, huh, all right, maybe there's <laughs> more to this movie than I'd originally assumed. And for those of you who don't know, it's directed and written by Jordan Peele from Key and Peele. And it's basically a combination of Rosemary's Baby and Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. And because the film deals with race, a lot of people are going to freak out about it in good ways and bad ways long before they ever see a frame of it. And, you know, I can't control that. People are going to think or feel however they like. However, I have seen the movie, so I can actually report back about what I saw. And both as social commentary and as a horror flick, it works pretty goddamn well. And also, given that we've got Jordan Peele at the helm, it's pretty funny at times as well. So I can't talk about the movie without going into spoilers. So I'll just say, this is the end of the review portion. Go see it. You'll have an absolute blast. And ignore the people who are trying to politicize it and all that kind of nonsense. It's just, if you like movies and you like thrillers and you like horror movies, then Get Out is right up your alley. So... Spoiler warning, one, two, three, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to be digging into some details now. So the premise of the movie is an old one, but it's a great one that's always ripe with dramatic possibilities. But a young couple where the boyfriend is black and the girlfriend is white decide to go out to for a weekend in the country or in the suburbs in order to hang out with her white family. Some of the best stuff in the movie is in the first act before the quote-unquote like real horror stuff begins. When you see just how awkward sometimes people can make people feel by trying just a little bit too hard to make everyone think they're not racist like this is a family that's very open-minded in a lot of ways but they get a little hyper when they first meet the character chris and they keep saying things like oh man like i would have voted for obama for a, a third time if i just had the opportunity to do so like i think he's really one of our great presidents you know that's all fair well and good however the way they say it is just it's just a tad too much but Chris, played by, I think his last name is Kaluuya, Daniel Kaluuya. He's a British actor, but you never in a million years would know it. His accent is pitch perfect. He's so laid back and so cool. He's just like, all right, man, yeah, that, that, that's cool. Like He's just trying to get through the weekend in a very mellow way and spend time with his girlfriend to make her happy and that sort of thing. And he just lets all this stuff kind of bounce off him, even when he's at like a cocktail party. And people immediately start saying things. Oh, I think like, you know, black's the new thing. Or I really, really like Tiger Woods. But... It makes you cringe because you think back, like, how many times have I tried just a little bit too hard to convince people that, like, I'm super, super cool and down with, like, all these different... I mean, it's definitely a trap people fall into. And what's cool about this movie is that it's able to tackle the topic of race without getting super, super political or it makes no judgments. It makes no moral stance. It doesn't at any point try to... Um, make people feel guilty or anything like that. It just portrays people in a way that's both funny and unnerving and very true to life that I found incredibly effective. And what's cool about it is that it makes the upcoming horror side of the movie all the more interesting because it is grounded in this weird, realistic setting. In terms of the horror, I mean, the, one of the reasons I initially wrote off the movie because in the trailer... Catherine Keener seemed a little flat. Now, I, I love Catherine Keener. I think she's a badass actress. I, what's weird is I, I find her much more terrifying when she just talks in her normal voice. The way she talks in movies, she's a really, really intimidating girl. And she's the kind of girl that guys who like intimidating women are just like, oh, please, like, talk shit to me. Like, it turns me on. Like, she's got that kind of persona. But in this, she's trying to play a bad guy. And I think if there's one flaw in the movie for me, this might just be a personal thing, but it, the one flaw for me was Catherine Keener came in slightly below par of the rest of her collaborators on this film. Bradley Whitford gets high marks as the really, really awkward father. He mean I, I, I will always think of him as the bad guy from Billy Madison. It's impossible for me to disassociate him from that part, even though a lot of people probably think of him as one of the characters from the West Wing, but he's always good whenever he pops up, and I, I think he was the bad guy also in Revenge of the Nerds Part 2. I'd have to check to confirm that, but for me, he's one of the quintessential kind of 90s bad guys from my childhood, so I'm always a fan of him. But I'm going into heavy spoiler territory now, so 
forewarned, essentially what this community is, is a cult of scientists where they lure in athletic young black men and they remove part of their mind and replace that part of their mind with the mind of an elderly white person so that elderly white person can kind of sort of live in that person's body but the other person still remains kind of deep 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 down in this subconscious realm that they bring on through hypnosis and it's really eerie gross gut churning stuff and Chris reacts with horror but luckily also keeping things kind of light even though it is a really fucked up movie in a lot of ways his buddy who's looking for him who knows he's in trouble is always calling him and trying to basically tell him to get out and his commentary on what's going on is absolutely hysterical so yeah while I was disturbed at times throughout this entire movie I never stopped smiling and I never stopped laughing in the best possible ways so yeah and that's a hard tightrope to walk if you're trying to gross people out and disturb them and keep them laughing. I'm totally blown away by what Jordan Peele was able to do because while I find his sketch comedy hysterical, I mean, there's so many classic bits on Key and Peele where they just knocked it out of the park. He's been in New York the last couple of weeks promoting this uh, social horror series of screenings at, I think, at BAM. He was playing movies like Rosemary's Baby and things like that. And I was like, all right, but for whatever reason, I just, I was being an idiot. But it's always nice to be proven wrong. And in the equation, you get to see a kick-ass flick. I'd much rather be wrong all the time about what's going to be good and what's not going to be good and get delightfully surprised by really, really entertaining movies than, you know, make... I mean, anyway, you get what I'm saying. I'm just happy to have had a good movie-going experience because any weekend that goes by where there's not a new movie that I get to enjoy, that's kind of a bummer. Time to get down to some really hardcore specifics. There is There are two moments where I uh, had a little bit of... Um, a problem by some sloppiness in the storytelling, but these are super, super minor, minor quibbles. But the big thing is Catherine Keener is able to always shut down the hero of the story by tapping on a teacup and making him go into a this like deep hypnotic state. And the way he finally outmaneuvers that is by stuffing cotton in his ears. Problem is, when he has the cotton in his ears, he's been manacled to a chair. Again, he's getting the cotton out of the armrest of the chair, but he's manacled, so I don't know how he got it into the ears. So that's a Pretty big plot hole, but whatever, I'll roll with it. But also, he gets in a fight with his girlfriend's brother, who's a big MMA and jiu-jitsu fanatic, and he's always talking about jiu-jitsu and all this kind of stuff. However, when he and Chris fight at the end, this guy, he slaps on a rear naked choke, and, you know, Chris studied judo as a kid, and they're fighting and that sort of thing. Chris ends up beating him, but the problem is the guy does not use his legs. And as the Brazilians always say, position before submission. You don't try to lock in a choke unless you have your legs around your opponent first. And in typical movie fashion, they fucked up the martial arts. And this guy, on day one of learning a rear naked choke, they teach you to wrap your legs around. So I had to also call bullshit on that. So, um, you know, whatever. that's again, super, super minor quibble. And unless you're an MMA fan, it won't bother you in the slightest. So yeah, thumbs up on Get Out. I think it's gonna do for suburban paranoid horror movies what deliverance did for taking canoe trips in the you know down in the in the, in the deep south like there can be a lot of jokes in interracial couples when people go to visit the family like oh shit have you seen get out and but i think that's the highest form of praise this is a movie that people will be referring to for a long time to come i think and i'm just psyched that jordan peele has made such a huge splash with this film means we've got more cool films hopefully from him to look forward to so yeah go check out the flick you'll have an absolute blast it gives a, a massive thumbs up from me i found it entertaining as hell and i uh, hope everyone has an awesome weekend at the movies so long